A function takes an input from the domain and maps it to a unique output in the range. For dealing with functions, we normally imagine that we have this input area here. This is the domain. And the function, which we usually call f of x, sends things off to the range. So, let's take a particular function as an example. f of x equals 2x plus 3. So things that are in my domain of this function include any sort of real number. And I'm going to pick some real numbers here. Let's pick the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Well, the function that I have here will take these values as its input. 1 and 2. And it takes these values and this function multiplies the inputs by 2 and then adds 3. So when I input 1, the output is 5. When I input 2, well I'm going to get 2 times 2 plus 3. That's going to be 4 plus 3, which is going to be 7. If I input 3 as an input, I'm going to get 2 times 3 plus 3. That's going to give me 9. To each input, I get a precise output. And this output that I get is unique. 1 always goes to 5. 2 always goes to 7. 3 always goes to 9. Under This is the big thing in calculus. Taking inputs from a domain and mapping them to unique outputs in the range. Let's talk about the graph of 2x plus 3. Well, I have my function. This is a straight line function that you might remember from college algebra. It has a y-intercept at f of 0, which equals 2 times 0 plus 3, which is at 3. And we have some other points for this function. So here's one of my points. I have another point when x is 1. My function has the value 5. So here's another point. I connect these two dots. And this line that I've drawn here is what we call f of x equals 2x plus 3 as a graph. Here I have an x-axis. Here I've got my y-axis. Looking at this as a graph, I see two pieces. I've got my x-axis, which is my domain, and I have my y-axis, which is my output. That's my range. My domain goes from negative infinity on the left all the way to positive infinity on the right. My range goes from negative infinity on its way down and goes all the way up to positive infinity on its way up. Another way I say this is that my domain is all real numbers. And my range is all real numbers. I use this bolded R to mean real numbers. Real numbers don't just include things like minus 1 and 15. They include things like square root of 2 and 3 over pi. All of these more interesting numbers here are all part of the real numbers. And so that would be my domain and my range 
for the function f of x equals 2x plus 3. I could have the function f of x equals 2x plus 4. I'll divide it by x squared minus 4. This function can be factored. This is called a rational function. And I can manipulate this function a little bit. I can pull out a common term on the top. And on the bottom, this factors to be x plus 2, x minus 2. First of all, let's look. If I plug in here that x is equal to negative 2, I'm going to have some trouble. Let's try plugging in negative 2 into this. On the top, I'm going to get 2, negative 2 plus 2. On the bottom, I'm going to get negative 2 plus 2, negative 2 minus 2. This will simplify to be 2 times 0, all divided by 0 times negative 4. This is a problem because I have 0 divided by 0. And I'm not allowed to divide by 0. This is giving me trouble here. So I say that x equals negative 2 is not part of my domain. It's not part of the numbers I'm allowed to plug into this function. There's another number I'm not allowed to plug in, and that's going to be positive 2. If I plug in positive 2 on the top, I get 2 times 2 plus 2, divided by 2 plus 2, 2 minus 2. This gives me 8 over 0. Again, I have 0 in the denominator part of my function. I'm not allowed to do that. Division by 0 isn't allowed. So x equals positive 2 is also not part of my domain. So I have my function, and for this function's domain, I've got all the values on the x-axis, except I'm cutting out negative 2 and 2. Those are the only two values I decided didn't work. So I'm getting rid of those two numbers, and so f of x has the domain. It goes from negative infinity all the way up to negative 2. I'm willing to take all of these places in here. I'm willing to go from minus 2 to 2. And I'm willing to go from 2 onward. Because I don't want to include the points minus 2 and 2, I'm cutting those out. So I use rounded parentheses here to show I'm not quite including the point 2. But I'm willing to accept points very close to things like negative 2. For example, negative 2.1 or negative 2.01, or negative 2.001. I'm willing to accept things on either side of 2, 1.9, 1.99, or 2.1, 2.01. I'm willing to get quite close on either side of 2, but I'm not willing to quite be there. This domain isn't quite complete. I need to tell you that I'm willing to be here, or here, or here. And the way I do that is with this union symbol. A sort of large U shape, almost like a capital U, means union in math, and it means or. So these guys right here will be my final answer for the domain of this function. To be able to talk about this guy's range, we'll have to go further into calculus, because range is talking about y values once again. And to be able to graph this function, we're going to need to have some calculus techniques. So range will come later in calculus. Functions take inputs, and we often think of those inputs as numbers, but they don't have to be. I can input letters into my function. 
And if I input letters into my function, this function takes an input x, it squares it, it multiplies it by 2, it adds them both together, and finally it adds 3. So now into this function, I'm plugging in x plus h. So I square it, I multiply it by 2, I add them both together, and then add 3 x plus h squared I'd have to FOIL and I get myself x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. 2x plus h I have to distribute to get plus 2x plus 2h and finally I have plus 3. This is the calculated out value of f of x plus h. In calculus, we think of using this because we think of something called the difference quotient. And the difference quotient says that f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h is going to be something we're often interested in calculating. Let's calculate that out for this. My f of x is x squared plus 2x plus 3. f of x plus h is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h plus 3. So I'm just going to plug these different values into my function here. For my f of x squared x plus h part, I have x squared plus 2x plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h plus 3. I'm subtracting f of x. So I'm going to subtract f of x minus x squared minus 2x minus 3. Notice I distribute that minus through to each term of f of x. Everything's getting divided by h. Some cancellation happens. x squared minus x squared plus 2x minus 2x plus 3 minus 3. This leaves me with 2xh plus h squared plus 2h all divided by h. Factoring out the common h term, I have h, 2x plus h plus 2. All of this is divided by h. An h on top and an h on bottom cancel, leaving me with my final answer of 2x plus h plus 2.